Hey, welcome to CNC Router Projects Start to Finish. In this episode, I'm going to wander slightly off the beaten path and look at something of an alternative application for the CNC, using it to create items made of concrete and cement products. Now, as you probably guessed, none of these items were made directly with the router. I didn't attach a slab of concrete to the spoil board and machine it with some special diamond encrusted end mill. Instead, either closed cell insulation foam, wood, or a combination of the two were routed to create forms or molds into which the concrete was then poured. While interesting items can be made exclusively out of cement, there's also lots of potential for integrating other materials, such as wood for the lids of these small containers and for the base of this clock, or the aluminum square tube that serves as a shade for this lamp. To demonstrate the complete concrete molding process, however, I'm going to focus on two items that are relatively straightforward to produce and don't require much or anything in the way of additional parts. A yin and yang tea light candle holder and this relief style welcome sign. When making concrete forms, the basic idea is to create a negative or inverse of the actual object you intend to produce. So the solid portion of an object, in this example the main body of the candle holder, is represented in a form by empty space. Conversely, empty space, as the area into which the candle fits, must be represented in the form as a solid object. To make the forms for both of the items in this video, I'm going to be working with 2 inch thick closed cell insulation foam. This is available in any of the big box home improvement centers and costs about $30 for a 4 foot by 8 foot sheet. Finally, the material I'll be using to make these two items is a cement product known as rockite. It's a mixture of Portland cement and plaster of Paris. What I like about this material is it can be poured in a relatively liquid form, has a quick dry time, a smooth finish, and can even be sanded to a limited extent. It's relatively expensive though, and may not be readily available. As a cheaper, viable alternative, bolt and rail anchor cement is an option. For this cement yin and yang candle holder, I'm going to reuse vectors that were created in a previous video on this channel. So rather than rehash the drawing process here, I've just added a link to this video, along with the start time of the drawing segment, to the description section below. When creating toolpaths, I'm going to be thinking in terms of the object as being upside down, as that's the orientation it'll be in when it's poured. For the first step, I'm going to select both vectors and pocket out the area between them to a depth equal to the desired thickness of the item. In this example, I chose an inch and one eighth. I'm using a quarter inch bit so I can get all the way into the tail section of the design. By default, the number of passes is set to five, which is entirely appropriate for wood, but unnecessary when working with foam. I'm going to reduce this to two passes. For optimal results, it's best that the depth of each pass not exceed the cutting edge length of the bit. Conventional cutting direction is fine. No need to ramp the plunge moves when milling foam, so I'll go ahead and calculate, and then preview the selected toolpath. Well, the pocketed area looks fine, but the issue now is that the remaining cylinder of foam that represents the hole for the candle is too tall. If cement was poured into this mold, the hole would run through the entire body of the candle holder. To determine how far down this piece needs to be milled, I'm going to subtract the approximate thickness of a tea light candle, which is about 5 eighths of an inch, from the thickness of the candle holder, which is 1 and 1 eighth inches. This indicates that one half inch of foam needs to be removed. So I'm going to select the circular vector, choose the pocketing toolpath, and specify one half inch for the cut depth. The last step I'm going to take is to reverse the order in which the tool paths are run, such that the cylinder portion is milled first. To secure the foam to the spoil board, I've been using foil tape. A strip or two on each of the corners is all that's required. Before milling deep into foam, verify that the bit extends beyond the collet a little more than the maximum depth of cut.
Oftentimes, a release agent is applied to a mold prior to pouring the cement. As the name suggests, this makes it easier to release or remove the hardened product from the form. So far, I've found that commonly available household release agents, such as cooking oil spray, while effective, tend to leave a residue or stain on the material. When working with forms made out of foam, I tend not to use release agents, as the foam can be removed either mechanically or chemically. If you're using rockite for either of these projects, approximately one half cup of water and one and a half to two cups of mix should be in the ballpark in terms of quantity and consistency. During the curing process, rockite will become very warm. Once the material has completely cooled, typically within a few hours, it's safe to begin the demolding process. A relatively coarse sanding sponge can be used to knock down any rough spots, ease the edges, and remove any mill marks that may have been transferred from the mold. After rinsing off the dust and allowing to dry, the candle holders are ready for use. The vectors for the welcome sign consist of an oval, four simple decorative scrolls, and some text that's been mirrored. If you're interested in making this particular piece, you can download the design as an EPS file from the link in the video description section. To machine the text and scroll elements, I'm going to use the V-Carve engraving toolpath. The first time I made this item, I didn't think these elements stood out prominently enough, so I ended up specifying a start depth for the cut of 1 16th of an inch in order to force the bit deeper into the material. For the oval vector, I'm going to set up a profile toolpath. The cut depth is set to 1 8 of an inch. For the tool, once again, the 90 degree V bit is used. And machine vectors is set to inside. Now, in addition to foam, I'm also going to use a small piece of half inch plywood to form the main body of the sign. So I have the same oval vector that was used for the sign, with a rectangle that's 9 inches wide by 6.5 inches tall surrounding it. To form the main body of the sign, the area inside the oval needs to be empty space. A pocketing toolpath could be used, but that's relatively inefficient, so I'm going to use a profile toolpath instead. The cut depth is set to go through the full thickness of the material. The bit is just a straight quarter inch, and machine vectors in this case must be set to inside. Now I'm going to cut this without any tabs, as I don't want to have to deal with sanding them after the fact. To keep this piece of wood in place, I'll secure it to the spoil board with one screw in the center. Finally, the rectangle can be cut as a simple outside profile.
This method of concrete molding may not always be practical or the best approach. In some cases, creating a positive model on the CNC and making a silicone mold, for example, for the negative is the way to go. But in many instances, foam and wood molds work well and can be really helpful.